In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the uh, solutions to a test review. This is for a test on polynomial equations and inequalities. And uh, on the first page, there's four multiple choice questions, so we'll start with those. In part one, it says, the very first one, it says, consider the synthetic division at the right, and here's the synthetic division, which polynomials were divided. Now, if you look at the numbers across the top of this row here, and we'll get into the negative 2 in a moment, those are the coefficients of the polynomial in, in well, ascending order if you go from right to left. So that's the constant, the negative 8. Negative 7 is the coefficient of the x, so that means that's a negative 7x term. The 0 is the coefficient of the x squared. It just keeps on increasing as you go towards the left. So that means there's no x squared term because the coefficient is 0. And that would be the uh, coefficient uh, 4 of the x cubed term. So the polynomial that was being divided is, the, is 4x cubed minus 7x minus 8. So notice that this is 4x squared, this is 4x squared, so that means that we could cross off a and d right away. Those cannot be correct because they're not a 4x cubed, they're 4x squared. So 4x cubed minus 7x minus 8, these are both the same. So, well, what did we divide it by? Notice this one's x minus 2 and x plus 2 is this one. So x mi there's, a, there's a negative 2 here, and that's actually the restriction of the division. So the restriction is uh, negative 2. Now, we normally list restrictions as x cannot equal, but I'm actually writing the factor out, so I won't bother with the inequality here. So... Uh, we get the factor it's divide being divided by the divisor by taking the negative 2 over here. So if we do that and set it equal to 0, remember when you move that negative 2 across, uh, the 2 would be, negative 2 becomes positive. So the factor that we're dividing it by is x plus 2. So c is the correct answer for number 1. Uh, number two, the factor theorem states, and d is the correct answer here, if p of b equals 0, then x minus b is a factor of p of x. So that's the a correct statement of the factor theorem. b is actually pretty close, but I'll explain why it's not correct. See, if p of b equals 0, okay, that's, very the, that's really the same as saying this part up to the comma. If x minus b divides p of x with a remainder of 0, so that's really the same as, as saying this then x minus b is a factor of p of b. If, if this is an x here, then that would be another correct way to actually state the factor theorem. But it says p of b, not p of x. Uh, the polynomial is a function of x, not of b. So that's why this b is close, but not quite. Uh, a, when a polynomial of p of x is divided by x minus b, the remainder is p of b. That's actually the remainder theorem. And I needed another I always have usually have four answers for multiple choice, so I just made C up here. It's not a correct statement of the factor theorem or the remainder theorem. It's just I made something up, so I have another potential solution here. For question number three, it says, what set of numbers is illustrated at the right? So uh, at six here, there's a solid dot, and we're talking about numbers to the left of that, so below six. The solid dot means you include the six in your solution. So B is the correct answer because its x is less than or equal to 6. A is similar. You see, if we had an open circle here, uh, then it would be x is less than 6. But B is the correct one. These are both greater than, so if the arrow is going in this direction, then one of those would be correct, depending on whether this was a solid or open dot here. For question number four, what is the correct division statement for this long division shown? And A, A is the correct answer here. This polynomial, the 6x cubed plus x squared minus 23x minus 20, it's being divided by 3x plus 2. And so the dividend, the answer, or sorry, the, sorry, the quotient is 2x squared minus x minus 7 with a remainder of minus 6. So... So we divide this polynomial by 3x plus 2 and got that and with that remainder. And there's really two different ways to make these division statements. So A is the correct way to do it. We divide the polynomial by 3x plus 2. That's what this really says here. And it equals, and that's the quotient, okay? Uh, and if there's a remainder, if there's a non-zero remainder, and there is here, negative 6, the negative 6 is written over what you divided the polynomial by, which is the 3x plus 2. So that is a correct division statement. Uh, another way to do it, and B is almost the right answer. You see, we took this polynomial, divided by 3x plus 2, and this is our answer, really. So this times this should would equal the polynomial if there was no remainder. If there's a remainder, 
Okay, so this is what this B is saying. This polynomial should be the product of this guy and this guy, which is these two right here. And if I had a minus 6 on the end, then B would actually be a correct way to write that division statement. So I, I purposely left the negative 6 out because you only want one right answer. Okay, so, um, so that would be a correct division statement if I had the negative 6 there. Because if you multiply those together, minus 6, you should get this polynomial. Okay, so that's... And really, actually, if you look at A here, you see if I, you actually get that division statement. If I were to take, to take A and multiply both sides, this is how these are actually equivalent. I'm going to multiply everything both sides by 3x minus 2. And I don't know, I kind of don't have room to write it here. So this 3x minus 2 is being multiplied by that quadratic right below it here. Okay, and we'll do the 3x. Oh, oh, sorry, plus 2. I, I missed here. 3x plus 2. x plus 2. So you see, in this multiplying, that would divide out. This would divide out. And so you see on the left here, I have my polynomial, the 6x cubed polynomial, and it's equal to the product of this guy and this guy, which is what this says, and then the minus 6 in the end. So by multiplying by 3x plus 2, that's how you convert this one into this one here. Uh, C and D are both incorrect. Uh, if I multiply a binomial 3x plus 2 by this quad, uh, cubic, I'm certainly not going to get a quadratic. You see 3x times 6x cubed is 18x to the fourth, so it should have a much higher power of x here. And uh, we, we're dividing here, so you wouldn't add those two to get this polynomial, so that certainly isn't correct either. On to part number two. Uh, so we are asked to show all work in the space provided for the second part on my tests. And a little bit noted about the five overall communication marks. They are for showing all necessary steps for using proper mathematical form, for using proper mathematical units, are if there are some. So that's the kind of thing that you're, if you're one of my students, uh, be assessed on in the communication part of the test. And overall marks. Sometimes I'll have questions which are specifically communication two, but I always have this five overall marks as well. So in number one, it says, what's the remainder for this division? So we're taking this uh, quartic uh, and dividing by two x plus three. So you could do synthetic division, you could do long division either to get the remainder, but I'm gonna use the remainder theorem here. And so if we're dividing by two x plus three, then um, we need to take that 2x plus 3 and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I bring the 3 over here, then uh, I would have 2x equals negative 3. And then I want to isolate for x here, so I divide out the 2. And so those are gone. So there's where the negative 3 halves comes from. And of course, if I divide that, I get negative 1.5. And so we substitute negative 1.5 in place of x here, here, and there, and evaluate and get 27.5625. So, so that's the remainder. Now, I could, so this is what it looks like in my calculator. Uh, so that's how I got that calculation. If you wanted to, if you have a, a, a graphing calculator, especially these text instrument ones, you actually can if you want this as a fraction. Uh, if you know, if you go in the math menu and select number one, it'll actually put that as a rational number. So the 27.5625 is equivalent to 441 over 16. So if you want it as a rational number, that would be 441 over 16. Okay, and question number two here, and there's two different parts to question two. You're asked to solve completely by factoring. So the so I want to factor this cubic and uh, here's my uh, graph and calculator image. Uh, the only reason I want that is so that I can not just simply use trial and error and maybe try several numbers before I get one with the remainder of zeros. You want remainder of zeros to factor. If the remainder isn't zero then you're not actually factoring. Okay because factors uh, you need a remainder of zero in order for it to go in evenly. So, and notice that it goes through at negative 2, so that's why negative 2 is going to work. Uh, 
So if you didn't have the graphing calculator, you'd have to try factors of 10. In fact, actually factors of 10 over factors of 2 could potentially work. So um, you don't just, uh, I would sort certainly start with a whole number like integer factors of 10, like plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. So there's actually eight of them. But you could also have, of course, uh, uh, factors of those over the leading two at the front. But negative 2 will work here. So we do the synthetic division. So 2, negative 7, negative 17, 10 across the top here. And so negative 2 uh, should work here. So we bring the uh, this 2 down and multiply it negative 2 by that 2, which is negative 4. Add the negative 7 and negative 4 to get negative 11. And so we multiply that by negative 2, which is 22. And add the negative 17 and 22 to get positive 5. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So those add to 0. So we have a remainder of 0. Now, there should be three, there can potentially be three linear factors uh, of this because it's cubic. And so if we look at our graph here, well, that's not a whole number. It kind of looks like a half, maybe. Uh, but this one over here, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five will probably work. So I don't need to divide five into the original cubic because I've already reduced it to, see, this original cubic has been factored into uh, x plus 2 times 2x squared minus 11x plus 5. So I really only need to divide that 2x squared minus 11x plus 5 by, uh, well, x minus 5. So I'm using 5 here. So we bring the 2 down again. 5 times 2 is 10. Add the negative 11 and 10 to get negative 1. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, and those add to 0. So I have a remainder of 0 again. So that, that's good for me. So negative 2 and 5 worked. So Negative 2 works, so x plus 2 is a factor. Remember when you bring that negative 2 over, the sign changes. 5 works, so it would be x minus 5 for a factor. And here's my last factor in the bottom. The 2 negative 1 means 2x minus 1 is the third factor. See, uh, when we set that equal to 0, bring the 1 over, the negative 1 over, it becomes 1, and then divide out the 2, we get a half. So a half is that other root right there. Uh, from x minus 5, we set that equal to 0, so we get 5. See, 5 is a root. And x plus 2 set equal to 0, we get negative 2, so negative 2 is the other root. So those are the three roots of the polynomial. Should, all should be the roots of the equation. Now, uh, uh, one comment before we get into the second one. It's a very common mistake in these questions, solved by factoring, is to stop here. But it's an equation, equals 0. You're not just simply asked to factor it. You're asked to set also, once you get it factored, each factor to 0 and find these solutions. Those are the three solutions to that cubic equation. So don't forget to also set them equal to 0 to find what x equals or whatever your variable is. OK, so second question number two uh, here. So we've got this uh, fourth order polynomial equation. And notice that we have some terms on the left, some terms on the right. In order to solve it by factor, we need all the terms on the same side. So I bring the uh, 2x squared over and the negative 8x over. Of course, remember the signs change. Okay, And so there's my polynomial in the same kind of form as this one was the beginning. So uh, we have it set equal to 0. And if there's no constant in the end, notice that there's a common factor of x out of all these. So I'll factor an x out. So factoring x out, then all, the x, all these powers just reduce by 1. 2 becomes a 1, 8x becomes an 8 because I factored an x out. And so um, one solution is going to be x equals 0. You don't see that from the cubic here graph here because I'm only just actually graphing this. I could have actually graphed this, I suppose. That would have been fine. But I'm really just factoring this now. That's why I graphed this cubic here. That's that cubic right there. So I do have this x. We can't forget about that. x equals 0 is the solution to this. Of course, if we put 0 here, 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 and here, we'd get 0 on both sides. So it certainly is the solution. So don't forget about that x equals 0 solution. So we have to factor this now. So uh, I graphed it over here and certainly look, see, y is 0 and x is negative 1. So negative 1 is going to work here. So 3 in my synthetic division, 3, negative 7, negative 2, 8, 3, negative 7, negative 2, 8. And I'm going to start with this negative 1 here. So bring the 3 down. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Add those, you get negative 10. And then multiply it by negative 1, so that will give you a positive 10. Negative 2 and 10 add to 8, positive 8. And 8 times negative 1, one last time, gives you negative 8, and those add to 0. Okay, so we have a remainder 0, so x minus 1 is going to give us, uh, it certainly, well, x plus 1 actually, uh, will be a factor. x equals negative 1 is the solution. 
Now, now I've I factored this, and what's left now is 3x squared minus 10x plus 8. So now I want to factor that, and I, you could use the quadratic formula if you wanted. But notice from our graph here, it looks like 2, doesn't tell me in, right here, it looks like 2 is probably a solution or at least really close. So we can try in the division. So that's why I did 2 uh, one more time in the synthetic division here. So bring the 3 down, and 2 times 3 is 6. Add those, you get negative 4. 2 times negative 8 is negative 8. And same thing I had over here. So those add to 0. So the remainder 0, x minus 2 is going to be a factor. So uh, negative 1 works, so x plus 1 is a factor. 2 works, so x minus 2 is a factor. And this 3, negative 4 at the bottom is 3x minus 4. That's the other factor. So we set each to 0. Again, x equals 0 from the x factor. Set x plus 1 equal to 0, so you get negative 1 for a solution x plus 2, sorry, x minus 2 equals 0, so x would equal 2. And 3x minus 4 set equal to 0, bring the 4 over, and then divide out the 3, and we get 4 thirds. So four solutions to our fourth order polynomial. So that's those are the solutions. Uh, question number 3 here, it says, show that x plus 2 is a triple factor of this polynomial. So a triple factor means it's going to divide evenly into that polynomial three times. Triple means three, of course. So I'm going to do the synthetic division. Now, um, I've seen a common error in, well, it's, it's certainly an error. It's sort of a, an incomplete solution. Uh, you could use remainder theorem to show that x plus 2 is a factor of this, but it would simply show that it divides evenly into it, not that it goes into it three times. So if I substitute negative 2 in here, 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 and here, it will give me a remainder 0. It just doesn't show that x plus 2 divides into it three times. So that would not be a, that would not be a sufficient solution. I give some marks for that, but not full marks. So I need, to def I need to show that this divides evenly three times by x plus 2. So x plus 2 is what we're dividing that uh, uh, quartic by. So that's why I use negative 2 in my division here. So coefficients are 1, 5, 6, negative 4, negative 8. 1, 5, 6, negative 4, negative 8. So bring the 1 down here. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And add here, you get uh, 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So this adds to give 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0, a couple of zeros here, and negative 4 and 0 add to negative 4. Uh, negative 4 times negative 2 is uh, positive 8 here, so those add to 0, okay, remainder 0. I'm not going to go through all the divisions here, but uh, you, you would do this again, get a remainder 0, and again, get a remainder 0. So if you wanted to write out what this looks like, this uh, quartic would factor into, you see, this would be x plus 2 each of these, so it would factor into... Uh, x plus 2 cubed, so cubed there, and this would be x minus 1 on the end here. So that's what the factoring looks like. So you can see that uh, x plus 2 uh, cubed is a factor of this, so it certainly goes in three times. So that's, uh, that's basically uh, uh, what would be called a, a triple factor or uh, x plus 2 uh, uh, goes into it three times. Now this was a little typo here. This should have actually said x plus 2. Like in the equation, if we had this set as an equation equal to 0, then we would call x equals 2 a triple factor or a triple root, but this really should have said x plus 2 here. For number four, determine k so that 3x minus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. And uh, so if it's a factor, um, that means the remainder in the division would be 0. So I take the 3x minus 2 and set it equal to 0, bring the 2 over, divide the 3, and we would get 2 thirds. So if we substitute 2 thirds in place of x here, and here, and here, everywhere in place of x, it should equal 0 because if it's a factor, the remainder should be 0. So that's what this line looks like here. I'm substituting 2 thirds here, here, and here. So there's the 2 thirds cubed, there's the 2 thirds squared, and there's the 2 thirds uh, multiplied by the 15 for the 15x. And it should equal 0. 
Now it does complicate things a bit because we have a fraction. Okay, but uh, so that's why this is a little longer than perhaps if you've done the assignment, that question was shorter. So uh, we want to cube this uh, 2 thirds, uh, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, square of the 2 thirds here, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9 in the denominator, and of course we have the 2 thirds here. And so uh, I have 8 times the k minus 1 on top over 27, 4k squared over 9 here, uh, 15 times 2 is 30, and then of course the minus or th over 3, and then minus the 18. So what I've done from this, I want to get rid of the fractions. So um, uh, I make my equation a little simpler. So from this line to this line, because uh, 27 divides evenly by 27, 9, and 3, I'm multiplying all of these by 27. So this gets multiplied by 27, this gets multiplied by 27, so it's the 30 over 3, the negative 18, and the 0 as well. Of course, that's 0 on the right. So uh, it makes it look a little bit longer because the fact that I'm trying to show clearly what I'm doing here. All that I'm doing from this line to this line is crossing out and doing some divisions. So the 27, this 27 divides into this one, that's what that shows. So this is just going to be 8 times k minus 1. This isn't an exponent. Uh, 9 goes into 27 three times, so that 3 is multiplied by the 4k squared, which is what this is. 3 goes into 27 9 times, 9 times 30 right here, and then uh, 27, well, 27 times negative 18, or negative 27 times 18 is what's here, and 0 times 27 is 0, so that's why it's just a 0 on the right side there. So I'll multiply the 8 in here, be 8k minus 8, 3 times 4k squared is 12k squared, 9 times 30 is 270, and uh, 27 times 18 is 486, that's minus 486. So a couple of like terms here, um, the 12 k squared at the beginning, there's no like term with that, or the 8k, but negative 8 plus 270 minus 486 is minus 224. And I can divide this all by 4 to make the equation simpler. Each of these divided by 4 gives us this equation here. And we actually could factor that. I used the quadratic formula, but it would factor if you wanted to do that. So here's my quadratic formula. Of course, I'm solving for k, not x. That's why I don't have an x here. So a is 3, so that is a 3, and of course in the denominator times the 2. Uh, b is 2, so that's why it's 2 here and 2 squared here, and c is negative 56 right there. So if you evaluate what's in the, uh, maybe we'll bring the calculator back over here. Uh, if you uh, evaluate what's underneath the root, 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times the negative 56. Okay, so that's where this 676 comes from. And the square root of 676 is 26, so that's why that's a 26 there. So we have uh, negative 2 plus or minus 26 over 6. See, if you take negative 2 and add 26, that gives you 24 over 6. And 24 divides evenly by 6, that's where this 4 comes from. If you do negative 2 minus 26, that's negative 28 over 6. And if you divide both of those by 2, because they're even, 2, negative 28 divided by 2 is negative 14, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so negative 14 thirds is the other potential answer. So there are two k values that would make this polynomial have a factor of 3x minus 2. Uh, question number five. Uh, for the, uh, you're asked for this uh, graph over here. Um, you're supposed to determine the equation for the entire family. Uh, we're going to handle this 1, negative 32 here, but we're in A really just looking at the roots. Uh, the roots are negative 3 and uh, 2. Notice the scale here. Uh, that's 2, so that'd be 2, 4. So a root of 2 and a double root of negative 3. So negative 3 is a double root because it just comes up and bounces off or touches the axis, it doesn't cross it, and 2. So if, um, so we'll call the we could call that y, I suppose. I used f of x. f of x would equal a, and we'll find a and b here. 
a times, and it would be, uh, since negative 3 is a root, x plus 3 squared, and uh, times x minus 2, because 2 is a root. So that's the equation for the entire family. Um, knowing that it goes through 1, negative 32 is what b is about, and we can substitute negative 32 in for f of x or y, and 1 in place of a to find the a value. So, so negative 32 goes here, so there's the negative 32, and then we're going to put 1 in place of x here and there. So 1 plus 3 is 4, so that's 4 squared, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Uh, 4 squared is 16, times negative 1 would be a negative 16, so it's negative 16a equals negative 32. If we divide both sides for negative 16, uh, negative 32 divided by negative 16 is 2. So that stretch factor for this particular one uh, is 2. And so the equation of this specific graph here would be this with a 2 in place of a, which is uh, exactly what I have here. Uh, for number 6, it says in A, solve uh, without, well, actually A and B, solve without using technology. We'll get into technology one in the very last question. So the first one is just a linear inequality. Uh, 3x minus 7 is less than or equal to 8x plus 2. And so we bring, so I want to isolate for x, so I bring the 8x to the left, the negative 7 to the right. So 3x minus 8x, remember that sign would change, and the negative 7 would become a plus 7 over here. The 2 and 7 add to 9, uh, 3x minus 8x is negative 5. And I want to isolate for x here, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. That's what this line shows. Now when you do a division by negative 5, uh, by actually not negative 5, but any negative, the inequality changes direction. So this less than or equal to becomes a greater than or equal to. That's why the sign changed. And so these negative 5s divide out here, gone out, and so the answer would be uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 9 fifths. So that's what uh, the uh, solution would be. If you wanted to graph that, and sometimes you'll be asked to uh, graph these, the way the graph would look, we'd need a number line, of course. Now, negative 9 fifths is uh, negative 1.8. And we're talking about x is greater than that. So I do want to show what these uh, uh, this would look like. So greater than, okay, so let's put our 0 here. And we'll make that negative 1, negative 2. We don't need a lot here, 1, 2. That's good. And we'll maybe make use a different color here for this one. So. Now, negative 1.8, so we need to make a dot here at negative 1.8, so, yeah, yeah, around there. And it's, great, it's greater than or equal to, so I need a solid dot. So uh, that's what I need. And uh, maybe we'll make a nice thick arrow. And so greater than means we're going in this direction. I'm going to make my arrow and then just move it down here because I can't draw on top of my drawing. So that's what the solution would look like on a number line. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1.8. For uh, b here, we're asked to solve in a quadratic inequality. And so the, uh, the first thing that we want to do is factor this. And um, I, I'm going to, on the right here, show the, uh, the factoring. So uh, if you, uh, I didn't in the solutions here, I just wrote 3x plus 2 and x minus 4. So we want to find two numbers that, um, and I'm just going to use decomposition here, that add or have a sum of the negative 10 and uh, have a product, and I'll abbreviate, abbreviate that, of uh, 3 times negative 8 would be negative 24. So we need to find two numbers that uh, multiply negative 24 and add to negative 10. And of course uh, that would be negative 12 and 2. So uh, I want to rewrite the 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 as uh, and decompose that negative 10x into negative 12x plus 2x. 
So I'm going to type that out. So that's what it looks like. So we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm decomposing negative 10x into negative 12x plus 2x. And so now we want to do some uh, uh, factoring or do factoring by grouping. There's a common factor of 3x. And maybe I'll write the rest of this. Uh, in the first two terms. So if I factor 3x out of 3x squared, uh, I just get an x here. And if I factor a 3x out of a negative 12x, I get a minus 4. Close bracket. In the last two terms, there's a common factor of 2. So we'll go plus 2. And then we would get x when we factor 2 out of that. And uh, minus 4 when we factor a 2 out of the negative 8. And so notice the two brackets both have x minus 4. So that's our common factor. And then the other factor would be the 3x plus 2. So we set each of them to 0 to get the roots. And then that's what's uh, listed right here. If we set x minus 4 equal to 0, we get uh, x equals 4. So that's one root. And then the 3x plus 2, we set 3x plus 2 equal to 0. Well, if you, okay, so we're setting equal to 0, so I'm going to bring the 2 over. So I would have a, a minus 2 here. I'm skipped one little step there. And divide out the 3. So negative 2 thirds is the other root. So, and maybe I'll think of this as a bit of a number line here. Um, so, Here's the, actually, let's do this. We'll sync it with the uh, the top of this here. So let's say that's one root. So let's say that's the four. And this is the negative, I kind of didn't leave myself very much room, negative two thirds. So there's the two uh, roots. So what that really means is the those are the zeros of this polynomial. So that's where it's going to change some positive, negative, or, or vice versa. So this interval here is below negative two thirds, which is what that interval is. Uh, between negative two thirds and four would be this interval, and then greater than four would be this interval. So that's where those three intervals come from. And so I write the 3x plus 2 and x minus 4 factors here, and we'll check the signs of each of them. And of course, the whole thing is the product of the two of them. So below negative 2 thirds, think of any number below negative 2 thirds, like negative 1 or negative 8 or negative 20, it wouldn't matter what. And so we're really just testing. Maybe I'll bring my calculator over here. In uh, 3x plus 2, you know, below negative 2 thirds, like negative 1 for example, plus 2. So when I substitute a, a number below negative 2 thirds in place of x here, I get a negative. So that's where that negative comes from. And then uh, we'll, I'll, I'll do, we'll do the whole 3x plus 2. I'll do both these as well. So between negative 2 thirds and 4, any number you want between negative 2 thirds and 4, for example, 0. And we'll get rid of that one. So oh, it's positive now. So that's why there's a plus there. And then greater than 4. A number bigger than 4, for example, here's a simple one, 5. 3 times 5 plus 2 is 17, so that's positive. So now I need to check those, the same numbers, or also numbers in the same interval, uh, in the x minus 4. So below negative 2 thirds, I use negative 1 here, so why don't we do the same number. So I'll put negative 1 there. So negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, so negative. And then between negative 2 thirds and 4, I used 0 last time, so let's do that again. So 0 minus 4, oh, it's still negative, so the negative there. And then bigger than 4, I used 5, so I put 5 there. Well, 5 minus 4, positive 1, I switched to positive, so that's positive. So that's where all those signs come from. And then the whole uh, quadratic is the product of these two factors. So it's the product of these two signs. So we multiply a negative from that factor by a negative from that factor. That gives you a positive. So on that interval, this uh, quadratic is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. And then from this one, positive times a positive is positive. So it's negative here and positive in those two intervals. And so we want where it's less than zero, where it's negative. So that the only negative is this one here. So it comes from that interval, the interval there. So 
the uh, the this the solution to this inequality would be it's less than zero between negative two thirds and four. So that's why that's the solution. Now in other questions, remember that if there was an equal to sign here, I wouldn't bother with the equal to sign in here, but you wouldn't your solution. So then in that case, we would put equal to signs on those inequalities. Uh, last solution, I use Desmos for this instead of the graphing calculator, just to show a little bit of how, what that looks like. And so number seven says using a graphing or online calculator solve the factorable ine factor non-factorable inequality 2x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x minus five is greater than zero to the nearest hundred. So that means two decimal places. So I graph this using Desmos and it gives me these for the two roots. So that's all we really want. Um, and we're looking for where it's greater than or equal to zero. So it's equal to zero here. Greater than would be to the left of that point and to the right of this point. So now I rounded this to um, to two decimal places. So negative 1.219 would run to negative 1.22. So x is less than or equal to that number. And also to the right of 1.31 uh, it would round to. So x is greater than or equal to 1.31. Of course, if I use my graphing calculator, now I need to graph this guy here. So let's turn all that off. So uh, 2x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x minus 5. And Now, I could change my window so you could see more of this. It's actually, well, it really wouldn't change, take much to do that. You can tell it's going down to around minus 5. So if I made my y min, well, even negative 6, it would be good. We'd see pretty much the same graph we see here. So I want to find those two roots. So uh, there's a function in the calculator to find zeros. So we want a 0, 2. And so let's do the one on the left here. I need to scroll to the left of it. So I went a little bit to the left of that point and you need to hit enter and then you need to scroll to the right. So I'm obviously past it here. And uh, it doesn't matter what you guess and just hit enter again. So there's the, uh, there's the root from the graph and calculator. And of course, uh, we could do the uh, other one over here. Let's go number two. And I want to do the one on the right here. So I need to be to the left of it to start. And anywhere here would be good. Enter. Go past a little bit to the right. Hit enter again and again. And that is about 1.313. So there's there's the solution. So, so that's how you can use the graphing calculator to get those roots for your non-factorable inequality ones. And that's the end of the test review.